on this episode of the Porsche Talk Show, Joe reviews a 911 GTS. We talk about virtual influencers from China and we reveal our Porsche art car. Welcome back to the Porsche Talk Show, hosted by Porsche Centre South Lakes. We've been away for a little bit, but we're fully back in the swing of things now. We've got um, episode uh, two is now. We're going to be bringing episode three even faster, so uh, you'll get all the news from the last couple of months from the world of Porsche. So, as is usual, it's me, Richard Smith, the marketing manager here at Porsche Centre South Lakes. And myself, Joe Longstaff, who's the Porsche Pro here. Right, so the first news article that I think I'd like to talk about is the uh, Porsche Unseen show mm. that happened in Austin in America. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, South by Southwest is a big technological artist music festival in uh, Austin in America. Um, it's sort of as festivals, uh, all sorts of pop-ups and things like that. And Porsche have been involved in it this year um, with their Porsche Unseen series. So they first announced these um, about a year or two ago. Um, they were concepts and uh, vehicles that um, were test beds for different ideas and po pushing the boat with what Porsche could design. Um, uh, but they never came to fruition in any sort of cars, so... Yeah, so the headline title on this, Porsche Unseen, provides a glimpse of unreleased concept cars. So this is some sort of really interesting history that's gone sort of hidden away for the last couple of years, and they finally released it to the public. Uh, as they said here, kept under lock and key in the yeah. past, but now released. And there's some really cool looking vehicles there. I know, like when I, when I saw these, I was like, why did none of these come to fruition? But obviously for uh, the, the concepts, uh, a lot of concepts and then multiple manufacturers never come actually to real life. Yeah. But um, they've actually gone ahead for this festival as well as, um, created a real life Sally Carrera from the Pixar uh, animated series of cars. So I think that was uh, just a bit of fun, isn't it? But uh, mm. I think it's just like really nice that Porsche are bringing these concepts, releasing them, showing off like sort of what might happen in the future or what things they're sort of looking at, which I think is quite cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you've been looking at the, the Macan T. Yeah, you? so new model in the Macan lineup, which is the Macan T. It's the first time the T derivative has come into the SUV within Porsche in the range. So T stands for touring. I'd say it's probably a little bit more driver focused vehicle. Um, there's a few really nice touches on it. So exclusive details on the inside and the out, which are, are finished in like a gate grey. So it stands out a bit more from the others. And um, where does it sort of like sit in the range, do you think, of like sort of, because obviously we've got T's in sort of other models, but not in this sort of SUV market. Yeah, so they say T has represented a unique form of dynamic driving at Porsche. So they basically, they initially base it on the, the, the starting model, which is the two litre engine, 265 PS. So it's the same engine as that, but it, it's the chassis they've optimised. So it's got stiffer anti-roll bars on the front. The computer in the car has been programmed to send a little bit more power to the rear axle than the front. Um, so it's just the handling, the characteristics, characteristics of how this car drives, which are really tweaked. And that's really nice to see from Porsche because it, yeah, it is an SUV, but they've just really optimised how it drives. And from a driver's point of view, the feeling it gives you. Um, in the range, they, they still do the S model, which will gain the bigger engine and they'll do the GTS, which gives you the bigger engine and sort of the dynamic chassis. So the T is almost like the chassis of a GTS, but with the engine of, of the standard Macan, so it's at a lower price point. Okay. So for someone that's really about the drive of the vehicle, how it makes them feel. Perfect one for them. Yeah, definitely. Um, talking about GTS, uh, yeah. we recently did a review of the 911 GTS, uh, which we'll link some clips here, and you can see the full video by going to the description below and clicking on the link. Right, welcome to Porsche South Lakes. Here we have a brand new model to the 992 lineup, the 911 GTS. Quite exciting this car, a lot of hype about it. Sort of sits between the S model and the GT3. Is this probably the best 911 road car you can get? We'll find out. So the sport design from bump has this sort of slightly different design to standard with a larger central opening. Just looks a bit more aggressive and then you've got the front lip on here in black. So as standard, the GTS has PDLS Plus, so Porsche Dynamic Light System, that turns the lights around corners, adjusts them to your speed, and also turns your high beam on and off automatically. The lights are actually tinted, so not the lens, just the interior of the light is darkened, so it's just in keeping with the rest of the, uh, the body kit on the car and the dark black accent. So in keeping with that, you've got the Porsche lettering on the back in satin black, and the 911 Crow GTS badge is in the black as well. The LED strip, that's a clear LED strip, so there's no red in that until the brake light's on. 
So again, just in keeping with the theme of the car, looks really nice. Right, so we're inside the GTS now. This particular car has the GTS interior package, which is really nice. It gives you some race tech interior trim, so the lower part of the dashboard, the door centers, even the steering wheel. So it's almost like a Porsche's own in-house Alcantara. We've got carbon inlays and then the crayon stitch, which you can get in red. It just makes this car feel really special. It's a really nice place to be. This GT Sport steering wheel feels absolutely phenomenal and it's heated. I have tweaked this engine though, so they've got an extra 2.3 psi out the turbos, which allows the car to make that extra 30 ps and 40 newton meters of torque. Porsche engineering everything to the finest tooth comb, so to make sure it can handle that, they've strengthened the flywheel. And they've also, if you went for the manual in this car, you get a twin plate clutch, which just helps better with heat absorption um, with the car producing more torque. So that was a that's pretty epic car to be driving and doing a review yeah, on 911 GTS. Um, talking about epic driving cars, uh, a call back to the first episode. If, if you saw it, um, there was uh, we announced that Porsche had been working on their LMDH prototype for the coming Le Mans um, in 2023. They've actually been the shots now of it testing on the track. So we'll link some pictures that you'll be able to see now. Um, and I think. I just cannot wait to see Porsche back at Le Mans. I think it's just yeah, it's really historic sort of race for them. And I think having this car and hopefully getting that 20th win. Yeah, there's a lot of hype around this car and especially Porsche coming back. Um, it's quite nice though for the team, they've managed to double the, the mileage that was on the car. So they've done over 2000 kilometers on this car and over a thousand of those are on track. So a lot of testing is going into this vehicle. Um, it's hard to get the cars on track and really push the limits of them uh, due to sort of uh, timings. But yeah, they're doing as much as they can. They're really happy with where the car is at the minute. So something that I just want to highlight um, is what Porsche Cars Great Britain has been doing recently. So um, the other week it was International uh, Women's Day um, and it was brought to the front like sort of trying to develop the, the female voice in the automotive industry. Um, and Porsche Cars Great Britain has been working on the We Drive series um, because out of 250 uh, journalists um, in the motoring sector, only 20 are women. And Porsche thought like they need to get that female voice out there a bit more, get, get more women into journalism in the automotive sector. And um, I think that's a, a really good thing to sort of like try and develop. So it's really nice to see that Porsche Cars Great Britain, um, who like sort of do the network for us here, are really pushing that. Yeah, they've definitely noticed the imbalance. And um, yeah, it's great that Porsche have noticed that and they're acting upon it. So it's really good to see and hopefully we'll get more and more sort of females into the, the motoring sector. Uh, whatever role it may be yeah it's fantastic to see so uh, talking about influencers joe you've been looking at uh, the virtual influencers yeah so the nice thing with porsche is they will experiment with anything that they see sort of a potential future in so uh, one of these new concepts is virtual influencers so these are almost like avatars so there is a person behind some of these characters. Sometimes there's multiple people behind the characters, like a brand themselves. Uh, and they will have a profile socially, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever it might be. But they're not a real person. You're not going to meet this person in the street. It's a bit of a bizarre concept, but Porsche is sort of invested in a couple of these just to see how it takes off. And, it shows uh, that they're on like the cutting edge, doesn't it? Exactly. And they're sort of trying new things in the sort of marketing sector, uh, getting new generations excited about Porsche. The, Porsche are very heavily influenced in computer games and all that sort of side of it. So it's good that they're sort of trying to target that younger market as well. And yeah. then obviously with Facebook doing the metaverse and we're all going to have digital avatars in the future, it could be the way yeah, forward. Yeah, so it might lead into that nicely. Um, you know, the digital world's changing. We've got digital currency now. We've got digital artwork with NFTs. So, you know, this is just a follow on. Yeah. So yeah, too right. Talking about that, um, nice segue there, Joe. We actually working with a digital artist on a wrap for a Panamera. So it was uh, announced uh, just on our social media last week. Um, so we created um, a digital artwork with a, an artist a pairing called Kai and Sunny. Uh, they developed an artwork that we then got wrapped onto a car. Um, I'll um, put the video up now so you can see some video of, of the car. Hi, it's Richard from Let's Talk Porsche. And today, we're talking about our Porsche art car. So Porsche has a long history of working with artists to create specially designed Porsche art cars. They've done it on 356s, they've done it on Taycans, 911s. 
And we here at Porsche Centre South Lakes have done it on a Panamera, one of the biggest canvases that you can choose. We've worked with an artist collective called Kai and Sonny to create the wrap that you can see on the Panamera behind me. Um, Ant Sunter, who's a sunny part of Kai and Sunny, lives locally to the centre. Um, we worked with like, him over the last couple of months to create their style, their design that they have in their art aesthetic and fit it to the Panamera. We then worked with Auto Wrap Manchester, who uh, kindly got the wrap made and put onto the car for us uh, so brilliantly like they've done. Um, so there's been a lot of history with Porsche working with artists to create these Porsche art cars. They've done 356s, 911s, Taycans. Um, they've worked on um, like a 968 with um, L'Art de l'Automobile. They've done a Taycan with um, Richard Phillips. Um, they've worked with loads of other different artists uh, over the years to create these special um, cars that's like a mix of the art form of the car and the shapes and the designs of the car mixed with the artist's theme and style put onto the car itself and the car becomes the artistic canvas and, and that's what we tried to do with our Panamera art car and um, we worked with um, and to sort of develop their artistic, his artistic style and um, onto the, the car itself. We um, went through lots of different stages of development, trying to morph it to fit how it would fit the design of the car. Um, obviously there were some compromises we had to make along the way, but we never sort of compromised the, the artistic vision. Um, and I think it's turned out absolutely brilliantly. So the car behind me um, will be used over the next couple of months for lots of different projects. We've got to have it on display um, at the um, Highest Point Festival in Lancaster, Leighton Hall Live. Some of our projects, um, Lancaster Grand Prix Cycle Race. Um, and also we're going to try and do some digital artwork with Kai and Sonny uh, and maybe delve into the NFT world, which will be something really exciting to do. Um, so stay tuned to our social media channels, subscribe to our YouTube to be kept up to date on everything about this special art car from Porsche at the South Lakes. So it's very bright, very colourful, um, it stands out. The uh, the rear colour is actually ruby stone or yeah, ruby star. Ruby um, stars, yeah, ruby it's now um, known. Yeah, um, historic Porsche colour. It's very much Kai and Sonny's style, if you see any of their artwork. They're um, very linked with sort of the uh, skateboarding scene. They do a lot of stuff in uh, LA, in Miami. They also um, work around the world for different uh, different companies as well. And they're in the digital sector, which is obviously very current. And we're hoping in the future to maybe do some NFT work with them. So that'll be quite exciting. Yeah. Show that little Porsche South Lakes in, in the UK is uh, on the cutting edge of uh, <laughs> Porsche technology as well. Yeah, and it does look really good, that Panamera. It's sort of got couple of different personalities because from the, the front it's a little bit more blue from the back you get the ruby star and then if you see a bit more a glimpse of the whole car you get the the real artwork which just looks fantastic it's really nice i put fuel in that car the other day and the amount of tension it got was ridiculous yeah it definitely stands yeah, out you so. definitely stand out don't you well well thank you for watching episode two of the porsche talk show as usual please like and subscribe to um, all our future videos whether it's our review videos these porsche talk show or anything else that we sort of put on our um, YouTube channel um, and also keep your eyes out because episode three will be coming shortly.